have been joined by the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, Perpetual Foray, who is here, who has an eye for the presidency, and we will have a conversation with her. Madam, good morning, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you, you look, too? You look resplendent in your outfit. Oh, really? Thank do you. you. Do you look like this every day? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> I see. Interesting. H how is the uh, Nurses and Midwives Association doing? We are doing well, but um, we, we are facing some challenges, okay. which we are also trying to address. And key amongst it all is the lack of implementation of our conditions of service, which okay. was the collective agreement which was signed in April 2016. Okay. And this has caused some dissatisfaction among the membership. So okay. those are the issues that we are dealing with. And mm. um, we also have a conference coming up. Mm -hmm. So issues here and there, and um, those are. The well, what's holding the implementation of the uh, conditions of service as I was agreed in 2016? The implementation, as it were, was faced with a lot of uh, implementation challenges. Basically, because um, the facilities were given that um, responsibility. Mm -hmm of implementing or paying most of the allowances and other emoluments that were mm. outlined in that collective agreement. Okay. And we all know that the facilities, health facilities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at all levels are mm -hmm. also challenged with um, um, funds in terms okay. of reimbursement of um, their NHIS funds. So it is always difficult to have a facility to pay certain allowances um, to mm -hmm. um, our members, but we think that that is even not an excuse because we see funds being used in paying certain mm -hmm. benefits to other categories okay. of health staff, and right. we believe that um, it is it is not good enough. Mm -hmm. We are all within the health service, and come to think of it, nurses um, form the greatest number mm -hmm. of health staff, and. Mm -hmm. Um, based on that, we also give more and to our nursing and midwifery services. Okay. And therefore, we shouldn't be challenged in this way. It's, it's a sign does collective agreement. Does it demotivate you? Of course it does. It does. And what would be the impact on, on the patient who comes up? I mean, they, they are not aware that your conditions of service have not been met. Mm -hmm. They are coming for health care. And then they come and the nurse is not happy. Uh, obviously, the patient will not be happy too, right? Okay. The point is that we are professionals mm. and we understand perfectly the ethics of our profession. Okay. And therefore, although we know that some of these things are not going on well, um, we don't put that or transfer that to the patient. Okay. A patient comes to the facility to um, seek for health service. Mm. So with this nursing service, midwifery free service, um, despite the personal or general mm. issues that we may be facing as mm. individual nurses and midwives, we don't transfer that's, that that's to the That's the patient. ideal situation. What yes. is the real situation? Um, I must say that um, the real situation is that most of the time, most of the time, nurses and midwives do their best in terms of acting professionally within the work environment. Okay. There are certain instances that we have where um, some nurses and midwives mm. don't act in that professional way. Okay. And most of the time those issues have been dealt with at the management level of the facility. Mm. And sometimes when it's quite grievous, it goes to the regulatory body, that is the Nursing and Midwifery Council. Okay. So these issues are there. In every house they said that there's a mensa mm. everywhere. So mm. we have the menses, but generally, Nurses and midwives are breaking their backs to ensure that they give of their mm. best to the Ghanaian people. You, you are a chief examiner as well. You teach, uh, teach, you examine, you have a wealth of experience. Are you happy with the presence, uh, present you know, levels of training that are offered to uh, nurses, especially from the private school perspective? People get in there and they don't really have a passion for the job. They just like to wear the uniform and call themselves nurses, but they actually are not nurses. Um, when you look at the training of nurses and midwives in Ghana, there, mm. are, there are rules and regulations guarding all this. The Nursing and Midwifery Council mm. is in charge of the training 
of um, or supervising and regulating mm. the training of nurses and midwives in Ghana. Mm. And the curriculum is very clear mm -hmm. on the four-year period that you have to train as a nurse. That is, if you are a diploma mm -hmm. nurse, mm -hmm. if you are an auxiliary nurse, mm. where you are going through a certificate program, okay. a two-year program, whether mm. as nurse assistant preventive or nurse assistant clinical, mm. Mm. or maybe you are entering the university to do a first degree nursing okay. program. Okay. All these are well cut out. Mm. What we see in the private sector is that most of the time the infrastructure and those the human resource that actually take them through mm. the training and sometimes the the number of hours they spend mm. at the clinical mm. area mm. and mm. then may not be uh, the best but okay. there are regulations guarding this and um, you cannot set up a private nursing institution mm. without accreditation mm. you need accreditation to be able to set it up and then run such programs mm. and there have been instances where some programs are being run and those institutions don't have those accreditations. Right. What happens to them? So the regulator has had a course um, to sh sh recommend mm. um, for the shutting down of, of some of these institutions. Okay. institutions. Okay. But there are still some that are out there mm. running these programs and they have um, trainees in those schools. Wow. So you, you ask yourself, that when you have gone through... Risk. That risk. Yes, definitely. Because when you have gone through those number of years mm. and you come out, you are not a nurse. Right. Because you have gone through an institution that is not accredited. Wow. So where are you going with how, that? How do you tell the fake from the original? For, I mean, for the young lady or the young man who wants to become a nurse mm -hmm. and you can't get into, say, Kolebu or any of the state-owned mm -hmm. institutions. How do you tell fake from real if it's a private school? Every year when the um, notice comes out for admissions into um, these schools, okay. the public institutions, for the public institutions, it is all advertised. Mm. So you see a list of all the public nursing and midwifery training mm. schools that are all accredited. Is there a protocol listing there, the public schools? A what protocol you, list of people who get in there into nursing school. Oh yes, it because is, they are related to oh, some of course, big it man. Is there. They are big woman's <laughs> daughter. It is there. Mm. But let me answer your previous question right. first. When you when you look at the private schools, there is also a list of those that are accredited on the website of the um, nursing and midwifery council. Right. So it is there. So okay. it is up to you to check out. Okay. Those schools that are accredited mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you enroll you apply, okay. to be a, a student okay. In, okay. or a trainee. So, in so you have made provision for people to know exactly. real from fake. Exactly. Okay, great. Now let's talk about the protocol system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are not happy about mm -hmm. it. You're a general secretary. What are your thoughts about it? Um, it it's something that um, we cannot we cannot um, run away from because it's it's. Protocols come from not only politicians, mm. it comes from uh, chiefs, it mm. comes from mm. our assembly. All, all the important people within the community okay. always think that they also have a stake wow. in, the, in, the, in the school. Mm. Let me put it that way. And therefore, year in, year out, we'll put forward some names that requesting for them to be admitted into the schools mm. but of course qualified or not qualified when they present they may not know whether those individuals are qualified or they are not but qualified what happens? but what happens is that the heads of these training schools and that is the principals of course we receive them we'll review them mm. those that qualify will be invited to okay. come for interviews mm. Mm. and in some schools that it's not just the face-to-face uh, -face interview mm. some are also do some written okay. um, exams. Exam. Okay. So based on your performance, mm -hmm. you are then enrolled or mm -hmm. you are admitted into the schools. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So um, most of the time, I would say that um, the heads mm -hmm. of the schools, that is the, the principals, are really focused on ensuring that the, those who are admitted actually meet the criteria. Should it stop? To Should be the admitted. protocol system stop? from where you sit. You want to be president of the Nurses and Midwifery mm -hmm. Association of Ghana. Should it stop or should it continue? It should stop. It should stop in the sense that, you see, when the advert goes out there or the notice goes out there, every individual who wishes to be a nurse 
should see that notice mm -hmm. and then uh, apply. When you apply, go through the system. Mm -hmm. If you pass an interview or you pass through the system and you qualify, you'll okay. be admitted. Okay. But where protocols are presented to mm. pre principals or mm. heads of institutions, mm. it puts a lot of pressure on them. Well, I can imagine. And, and you, you are put in a very difficult situation mm. because you don't want to offend somebody, mm. mm -hmm. and yet mm. you also want to meet your number. You are given okay. a quota, a right. certain number to admit. You okay. want to meet that mm. number. Mm. And yet, yeah, yeah. In, year out, the numbers... The protocol list The doubles. protocol lists are even way over the, the, the total number of um, trainees mm. or students that mm. have to be admitted within a certain period. Wow. So it's a tough job, and um, if it stops, it will be... It will augur well for everybody because mm. it means that it will give equal chance, equal opportunities mm. for every Ghanaian who wishes to be a nurse or the, midwife. The question of the licensure exam, some of the students have complained about it. They say... Uh, you're, you're breaking their backs. First, how much they pay for it, and second, the insistence to, to have it done, even though they say, we are qualified. Uh, what do you say? Licensure exams yeah. are, are important. <laughs> you, you, you write licensure exams, and mm. that is what qualifies you right. to receive your license to practice. Okay. And it's not a new thing. It's, it's been there over ages. Mm. And it's not only in Ghana. It is everywhere. Mm. It is everywhere. everywhere. You write board exams okay. to qualify to receive your, your license to practice. So, so they don't have a case, really? Oh, they don't have, have a case. You have to go through it. You have to. What, what is the state of the bonded nurses in, in this country? Uh, I, I heard the Minister for Health say that f from the period we won't be bonding the nurses again, which would then mean that they wouldn't be having automatic jobs after school. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct? Is that the situation? Yes, um, from 2016, um, the nurses who were, um, or the students who were enrolled in the NMTCs were not bonded. Okay. So what it means is that, um, technically, mm. um, when you qualify to be a nurse or a midwife... Okay. Um, that's after your licensure exam and your board exam. Exactly. Okay, now you have your certificate. You have your certificate. It means that um, the, the government is not mandated kind of mm. to employ you um, but, but why? To, to serve the bonding mm -hmm. is it, it was a i would say that it, it helped in the sense that once you were bonded and you qualified mm. um the the government ensured that, that you were employed okay you were employed right. either through um the ghana health service mm. Mm. Um, the chag institutions mm. or through the teaching hospitals. Okay. All these are employing agencies. Mm. But without the bonding, um, it, 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 it means that they are not, their hands are not really tied to, to employ you. Mm. You have the opportunity to also go seek employment within the private... Is that a good policy? Bonded, you are a bonded nurse. Yes. You enjoyed automatic employment. Exactly. Is, is that a good... Is that a good policy from where you say that's general secretary? There, there are pros and cons to it. There are advantages the, what, what the and disadvantages. You see, if, if we have to look at Ghana as a whole right. and determine our needs mm. for nurses and midwives such that those that we train, mm -hmm. whether in the public or in the private accredited schools, mm -hmm. The numbers that we train okay. should be good enough to serve our purpose in terms of our needs for nurses mm. and midwives. Mm. That is where we have to get to, so that we don't overtrain, mm. knowing that every year those who pass out, mm. they can be conveniently employed within the Ministry of Health okay. or any of its agencies. Okay. Okay. Knowing that even currently, there are facilities um, in some regions where there are no employees there who are working. Wow. And we have facilities where the numbers of nurses and midwives are not enough. Mm. They, there's understaffing mm. such that um, nurses are overburdened with having to care for large numbers of um, mm. patients. Mm. And it's, it tends to burn them out, and okay. you cannot get the best so, so out of them. So we should actually be bonding them, is that what you're saying? Yes. If okay. we bond them, and 
we can employ them that is fine but you see that's why i said there are there are two they sides to get the point. financial clearance and exactly the financial clearance has to be gotten before somebody but, but can the health is a priority area so we should not be talking about financial clearance the lack of it which will uh, let us see people who are trained qualified have gone through licensure board mm -hmm. exam and are sitting at home doing nothing exactly that is why i said that we need to get to a point where we know our needs as a country okay that okay for we can easily project mm. that okay come next year what we need uh, uh or it will be difficult let's say those who are in third year are going mm. to qualify mm. and be out by by next year right. so it, but we can project let's say next three years okay next four years okay. how many nurses and midwives do we need in ghana do we if, have do we have the we requisite need, capacity of nurses in ghana now you I, said that some facilities don't, so. don't have the I government has been so. putting out figures that 55,000 that they have employed are those yeah. figures correct from where you sit checking from, by books? from where i said i'll say that yes what we know is that from uh, the backlog from 2012 mm. they're about to um, 2016, okay. 2017, most of them have been employed. Okay. We still have um, those who qualified in 2017, a bit of them that I know that uh, efforts are being made to, to, to get, to get the financial clearance okay. to actually employ them. Okay. Because there's still the need to employ nurses mm. and midwives in Ghana. Based on what I said, that's the numbers. When you look at the nurse patient mm. ratio and nurse population ratio, By these WHO are not the standards, UN standards. They are not the best. But we are exporting nurses. I saw a letter to exporting <laughs> critical care nurses, anesthetic nurses, and all of that. If we don't have enough here, why are we exporting the little, the few we have? So we've talked about this, that exporting nurses is not a bad thing. Okay. We have case studies in the Philippines and the rest. They're exporting nurses. Mm. And the revenue accrued to the country is good enough. Ghana can get there. But it should be a strategic plan over a couple of years that we okay. actually sit as stakeholders okay. and determine that this is the way we want to go. Mm. These are the numbers we, that will serve our need in the country. And these are the numbers that we can top up, right. top up mm. to ensure that they can that be... Steady? That can those numbers can be exported. Have we done that study. I don't think so. From where I sit, what, uh, we what, are we what are we waiting for to do that analysis to make up our mind what we need and what we do not, and how we can help people? From where we sit as a union, it is not our responsibility to be thinking about um, exporting nurses. Okay. Our core mandate is to organize, is to mobilize, mm. and to ensure the welfare of our members. The ambulances are out so, there at Parliament. What do you think about them? Should they be distributed now or should they be let uh, to wait before we get the 4307 before we distribute? We need as, ambulances as, now. As president. So they should be distributed of now? Of course they should be distributed because we see what happens on our roads, the accidents and the difficulties in the facilities. Um, transporting a patient who needs to be referred from one point to the other is always a difficulty. And we need, we need them now so they can be distributed. Madam President, as uh, you would be called, that's your <laughs> camera. If I give you one minute, share your vision why we should vote for uh, perpetual fori to become uh, perpetual perpetual for, yeah, to become president. That's your camera there. One minute. Speak to the world, your delegates. They are, they are watching and listening. I'm perpetual for I'm perpetual. And I believe I can be the next president of the association because I have the wealth of experience. I have the institutional memory to ensure that we move our association to greater heights. I'm talking about leadership and governance, education, training and research. I'm talking about welfare of all. And I'm talking about influencing health policy that will ensure that we advance the cause of nurses and midwives in Ghana. Thank you very much, madam. It's a pleasure. Uh, I, I wish we had some more time. I would have asked you about student loans. But we'll do that later. But uh, she says, vote for her. Perpetua Ofori Ampofo. She's general secretary of the Ghana Nurses and Midwives Association of Ghana. But she wants to be president of that association. What do you think? Join us.